All right, recording is going. So, yeah, welcome to uh, Thursday. So, reminder, I'm going to pick up your guys' uh, homework tomorrow. So, to remind you guys uh, what that was, uh, a, a long time back, I gave you guys a couple of pages. One looks like this, which we're going to uh, solve a few from today. And one looks like this, projectile problems with boxes on it six different scenarios. We're going to solve some of those today, too. So we'll do a little bit for each of these. But what I uh, told you guys to do was just to pick any eight and write those up term in. And between the notes we've already done on these and the ones we're going to do today, there'll be like plenty more than eight. So just follow along in class. Uh, also, in retrospect, I don't think that was a, the best idea to say, like, oh, just pick any eight. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but I think from now on, I'll pick specific problems for you guys to do. I think that'll just make it easier. Okay. Uh, oh, quiz. I've got a quiz for you guys. It's clipped on the right side of your desk. You guys see the right side of your desk? So pick up one of those. Uh, take home quiz, uh, do Monday. So you guys have a few days to do it. Uh, anyway, if you want to do it tonight and turn it in tomorrow, then you'll have to worry about it over the weekend. So could do that. Uh, but if you have a few days to check your answers and turn it in Monday, then do Monday. Okay, so uh, today, uh, just like I told you guys, I want to do a few problems from your textbook, principles and problems, and then a few uh, more problems from the uh, Painted boxes, projectile scenarios. Okay. Oh, also, uh, there was uh, quite a bit of interest about uh, a songwriting club. So, uh, just give you guys an update on that. Uh, I, I submitted the paperwork for that last week. I had about 20 students that said that they would be interested possibly in joining. So, um, I, I thought I'd get a response back right now. Haven't seen anything. So, uh, I, I'm sure it's going to be approved. So, if you were curious and you wanted to uh, join this club, then here's going to be the first two meeting days. Uh, students were telling me uh, they could only join like these days, not these days. So here's what I figured is, is going to be good. So we'll, we'll try this out. We'll, we'll try a couple of days. If you're curious, you want to join, then uh, please do. And have you guys write some songs, and it will be a fun time. Okay, so uh, let's from here. A rock has been falling for seven seconds. How fast did it pick up to you, and how far is it falling? I bet a lot of you guys already saw that. Who, who already knows the answers to those questions? Yep, Josh. Oh, okay. So speed. Is 70 meters per second. 70 meters per second. And then the distance is falling. It's falling 40, 40, 40, 40. 240 something meters. Yep, that sounds right and right. Uh, so let's knock this out. Uh, rock's been falling for seven seconds. Okay. What is its speed? Uh, I'll try to go a little bit faster today just because uh, this is, um, it should be for you. I mean, you guys should be able to do all these by now, but I'm going to be re referencing these three formulas. Uh, now, how fast has it fallen? It's going to be the second one here. How far has it fallen? Well, that's like x. It could be this one here as a function of time. Okay. So, kind of knock those out. Uh, so, the speed it's built up to is equal to its initial speed plus at. Well, okay, so that's the, but if it was dropped from rest, this goes to zero. So, the speed it builds up to is just well, acceleration times time, but goes in a free fall gravity. That's, of course, 10 meters per second squared. Okay. Or I, I think Joshua used 9.8. So you used 9.8? Yeah, so that's how you got that, right? Uh, and then times 7 seconds. That gave you 70 meters per second. Okay. Uh, I'm curious to see what, what would happen if I used 9.8. What is 9.8 meters per second squared times 7 seconds? Just to see how off would it have been. That is that. Okay. Uh, closer to like. 68.6. Uh, how do you go to use 9.8 or 10? Oh, uh, it, um, 9.8 basically is 10, right? It's, it's like almost the same number. So um, usually I use 10 in class, but some of the materials have 9.8 printed on them. But whether you use one or the other, they get you basically the same thing. And that's just what I want you guys to see. So um, I, I would specify within a question if it, um, if it really made a difference. So usually I try to use 10 to class. Uh, the other question was, how far has it fallen? And I'll, I'll do the same thing. Uh, is, uh, I'll, I'll use both versions of gravity and say, hmm, what was the rounded version? Of it? So let me just boil it straight down to the uh, the part you need, just one half gt squared. Right? I'll tell you how far it's fallen. Right? Maybe I should say y equals or h equals. So. Uh, let's use the rounded value of gravity first, 10 meters per second squared, 7 seconds, square that. Okay. See what come up with. What is 1 half times 10 times 7 squared? Okay. That is about 245 meters. So far, anything would fall in 7 seconds. Uh, what, what, what if I did do the 
9.8 meters per second squared. Just to see how does that compare. 9.8. Uh, yeah, 240.1 meters. Okay. So, yeah, you know, within about five meters from a really high drop. Okay. Now, uh, this is, of course, all ignoring air drag, uh, which we'll bring in in, in the future. Uh, and, and that probably makes more of a difference than this little bit of rounding of uh, on the gravity. Okay. But hey, uh, what if we did bring in air drag? Let's, let's think ahead a couple of chapters here. Uh, would the ball pick up after seven seconds? Would it be going faster than or slower than 70 meters per second if, if you include air drag? Slower. Slower, yeah, it's not going to be going as fast. Right? And also, how far would it have fallen? More than or less than about 245? Less than. Yeah, less than. Uh, I don't know, maybe 230, 220, 200, right? depending on the shape of the object, because right? if, if it has a parachute attached to it, maybe even less than that. Right? All right. And you know what we just did? That question right there happens to be the same as number 98 on your guys' uh, book problems, except they use a different falling time, but otherwise exact same setup. Okay. So yeah, we just did that one. Boom, done. Uh, next one of my cover is number 105 from your book. It says bicycle. Ooh, great, got a bicycle. Well, this one's gonna be fun. Uh, it says a bicycle uh, accelerates from rest to so many meters per second, you know, some speed, and some time interval, so many number of seconds. What distance did it travel? Uh, now, I'll, I'll do what I usually do with you guys, which is uh, I'll make up my own numbers, but otherwise it'll be the same thing as the book question. Okay. So this bike uh, started from rest and traveled, uh, yeah, we picked up to some speed in some amount of time, right? So hmm, how much distance would, would that have been? So V naught equals zero meters per second, that, that was given. Uh, you were also given final velocity as some number. Again, I'm just, I'm just gonna make up a number. Let's say you go up to like 12 meters per second. Right? And uh, let's say the time to do that was, the, the time to get up there was, oh, uh, four seconds. Okay, right? so we've got can you figure out how far did the, the bike travel? Hmm, it, it'll solve it this way. Take a tax VV table, just, just for a checklist. What variables do I have? Right. Well, I know this one was zero meters per second. Start from rest. I know it picked up to 12 meters per second. And I know it took four seconds to do that. So I have those things. Right. You know, if I'm going equation shopping to figure out, ooh, what is this X? Well, uh, the difficulty is that Every single one of these formulas has acceleration in it. Right? So I really need to solve for that first. Yes, that before I can solve for x, I have to solve for a. So I better pick an equation that does not involve x. Otherwise, I would have two unknowns. See the first one, a and x. Last one, a and x. Oh, oh, a and x. Okay. So I'm going to start with that middle one just to solve for a first. And then after I get acceleration, I can figure out the distance with either one of these. Okay. Let's do that. Let's go. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Solve for that. Uh, I know that it picked up to 12 meters per second from rest. And it took it four seconds. Okay, okay so ignore the zero, this whatever it's gone. Do you guys see what I'm going to do to both sides algebraically? I'm going to do what? Divide by. This four seconds that will isolate the acceleration a so acceleration equals whatever 12 divided by four is here write that up divided by four seconds divided by four seconds okay. 12 over four hey isn't that like three and then meters per second per second that's meters per second squared there you go right. well that wasn't what they asked but that that's a middle step you have to figure out right i have to know what rate is he speeding up to get to that point okay. the, the actual question was how far like how much distance well, I bet we could use either the first or third kinematic formula to set up an equation and eventually get there. Uh, let me show you guys that it'll work either way. Good, good review for either one of those. Uh, I'll just boil it down to the part that you need. Either x equals, um, well, yeah, let's say one half at squared. If you start from rest, that'd be true, right? Okay. Or you could maybe use this one. Bf squared equals b naught squared plus 2ax. 
where uh, again, because V not zero, that just goes away. Goodbye. And uh, the question on either of those is how far? What's x? Well, uh, ooh, I, I actually, I do like the first kinematic equation because look at that. I don't have to do any algebra at all at this point. I can just plug numbers in. So the acceleration was this number here, 3 meters per second per passing second. If you do that for, uh, what was it, 4 seconds? For that, let's say, what is 1 half times 3 meters per second squared times 4 seconds being squared? That is 24 meters. There you go. That's how far this bicycle would have went. To go from rest to 12 meters per second, and it did that in four seconds, it needed 24 meters of road. Uh, let's see if, uh, if I've been lying to you guys the whole time, or if all these equations really work. I should be able to do this, this crazy combination here and also get the same answer. Let's see. So you're going up to 12 meters per second. That term is being squared. Two times the acceleration would have to be three meters per second squared. So I'll plug that in. Okay. Solve for x. Hmm. Right, so I've got 144 crazy units equals 6, and then some kind of acceleration unit times x. Okay. I guess I can just divide both sides by 6 meters per second squared. So got an algebra step in there. Okay. What is 144 divided by 6? I hope it's 24 meters. Let's see. Let's see. Moment of truth. Yep, it's 24 meters. 24 meters. There you go. Uh, just to double down on the point that uh, there are oftentimes multiple ways to solve these. So if you don't see one way, then maybe, uh, maybe there's another equation I could solve. Them. Right. Also, I want to hear with you guys number, uh, uh, number five at the bottom. And you know, it's a small number, but there was like a, like a test like a small test at the end of the chapter and i like this question so let's do this one real fast does a rock climber shoe loosens a rock and her climbing buddy at the bottom of the cliff notices that the rock takes so many seconds to fall off the ground how high up is the rock climber right, so it's our classic cliff question how far does anything fall in some amount of time right, so if it takes isn't that just uh maybe like this h right, the height of the cliff could just be basically one half gt squared. So if you start to rest, we didn't throw the rock down. Or take it down, I guess. So one half, uh, let's use 10 meters per second squared, which I usually do. And then however much time. Uh, so I'll make up my own time that's pretty simple. Let's say three and a half seconds. I've got a rock falling for three and a half seconds. Okay, don't forget to square that. If the rock falls for three and a half seconds, how far did it fall? One half times gravity times 3.5 squared is, looking at about 61 meters. Oh, okay. How many digits can I really know? Probably about that many. About 61 meter drop height. Okay. So if your textbook gave you a, a following time that was close to my number, but a little bit different, then you should be able to figure out, oh, well, I bet the textbook answer is, uh, also, pretty close to 61 meters, but a little bit different. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, any questions so far? Uh, switch over to that. Uh, page with the boxes where I threw you guys a bunch of different projectiles. Now, I know uh, sometime earlier, I, 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 we did go over this first scenario, right? number one through four, right? got six unique scenarios. So yeah, let's, uh, let's hit the second one. I like, I like the second scenario. It says a cannon fires a cannonball. Let me take a time. Okay. A cannon fires a cannonball horizontally at some given speed uh, off the edge of a cliff of given height. Uh, let, me, let me get that set up so far. Okay, so, got a cliff. This is number five through eight on the page with the boxes. Uh, we've got a cannon firing a cannonball horizontally from the top edge of the cliff, so that's the setup there. Okay. Uh, given speed and given height. So you know what the height of the cliff is. 
H. Uh, and you know what? I'll just shop it straight from the page of mine. Uh, I've got, well, it says Y. Y equals 15 meters. So 15 meter tall cliff. Right. Right. And also, you happen to know the blast speed. It says a uh, like given speed. So you know how fast this cannonball is firing. Um, I could call it V blast or, or something. I'll, I'll call it V sub X. And the reason I'm calling it V sub X is because the cannon is aimed straight horizontal. So that while this cannonball is in free fall, it's always moving to the right at whatever the blast speed was. Uh, and on my paper, I wrote 80 meters per second. So I'll go ahead and just use that number. Okay. Uh, there's one other thing you know, and that's Earth gravity. So I'll put that over on the side here. I'll say G. Uh, on the notes, I'm going to do 10 meters per second squared. But if you look really close, uh, I actually typed 9.8, and then I set up Excel to automatically do the calculation with 9.8. So you know what we're going to find out? We're going to find out. Uh, because these numbers are the same as uh, on the printed page, at least on this paper. Um, we're we're going to see how close uh, we get it with, with a rounded version of gravity. I bet it's going to be extremely close. I bet, it'll, I bet it'll be so close that it'll, it'll basically match one of those multiple choice answers. Uh, and actually, there, there were a bunch of questions. So we're, we're going to go answer all those questions. So the, uh, that cannonball is going to follow this projectile path, which takes the shape of a parabola. And the first question that we're trying to answer is uh, how much time does it take for the cannonball to reach the ground? And there are a bunch of follow-up questions, but you have to answer that first anyway. How much time? How much time to, does it take to reach the ground? Okay. Now, you guys are looking at that setup. That's all you know right there. You just know that much. Uh, can you guys tell me what which number is more important for figuring out the uh, amount of time to uh, reach the ground. Do you want the cliff height of 15 meters, or do you care more about the uh, blast speed of 80 meters per second to solve for time? Height. height. Yeah, that height. It, uh, because, because this cannon is aimed straight horizontal, what, what if you did this? What if you blasted this cannonball exactly like it's shown, and at the exact same time you drop the cannonball? Which one to hit the ground first? Yeah, same time. They're going to tie. Right? So the amount of time that it takes to reach down has nothing to do with the blast speed, well, as long as it's not like, going into orbit. Right? It, it has everything to do with uh, how far it falls. Right? Now, if I angled the cannon up at so many degrees, then this would become a much more complicated problem. But for now, yep. Yeah, we're just going to look at this 15 meters, and we're going to use that to determine the, uh, the drop time, the free fall time. Right? So um, maybe I'll shop this equation. Uh, X equals b not t plus half a t squared. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to modify it for what we need to use it for. So uh, this displacement is really the, the draw height. Uh, hey, how about this? This initial velocity. Now, if we're only looking in the y direction, which we are, right? because remember, these are vector values, so I'm looking specifically in the vertical direction. How fast vertically was the cannonball leaving the cannon if the cannon was aimed straight horizontally? Was this ball moving up or down at all, leaving the cannon? No, it was going straight to the side. So it had zero initial velocity uh, in, in the vertical direction. So this is really V not Y. Uh, but, but, but this is just going to end up being zero meters per second. So it's just going to go away. Uh, then we've got one half uh, acceleration. I could call that G, which is going to eventually be 10 meters per second squared uh, times some time that we're solving for squared. Okay. So if we solve for that, we should know all these other numbers. Uh, I know that. The height was 15 meters. Gravity, I'm going to call it 10 meters per second squared. We're going to compare it to the answer at the end. How close is that to if you had plugged in 9.8? Okay. Okay, so I got 15 meters is equal to, let's see, 1 half times 10 meters per second squared times time squared. Okay. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 10 meters per second squared. So that pink is just the, the algebra. Right? Uh, that will cancel with, with all this. So all this cancels. So you get t squared equals what is 15 times 2 over 10. Oh, that's uh, 3. 
Except, and then the, the units. Well, meters and meters cancels. One divided by one divided by a second squared. The second squared comes back up on top. So the time squared is equal to three square seconds. Then to isolate t, what's the last algebra step? To square root both sides. Square root both sides. There you go. So square root, square root. Um, I'll swap both sides while I'm at it. I get t is the square root of three seconds. What is the square root of three seconds? That's 1.73 seconds. Yeah, that's the following time. Okay. So now we're one step closer to being able to answer uh, anything else. Okay. So it takes uh, 1.7 seconds to get from here to here. It would also take 1.7 seconds just to fall straight down. Okay. Or if you blasted it at twice the blast speed, it was, it was, it's always going to have a hang time of 1.7 seconds. Okay. Uh, what else we got to figure out? Uh, we got to figure out, oh, how far did the cannonball live, land from the base of the cliff? Right? Now, if you guys are ever taking physics in college, then they might actually just start with that question. Where does the cannonball land? What is what is this value x from here to here? Okay. Uh, but you'd have to know that, oh, wait, I, I took Griffin's class. I know I have to solve for time first. That's, that's why I asked you that question first. So what is this distance x? Hmm. Okay. Well, hey. Uh, isn't the distance that it goes equal to how fast it's going across times however much time it's in the airport? Hey, this looks uh, a lot. Th this reminds me a lot of you guys' lab from yesterday, uh, except it's sort of the, the, the opposite version. Yesterday, you guys uh, measured how far did it go, and then you use that to back calculate the launch speed. And in this question right in front of us right now, we know the launch speed, and we're trying to figure out how far did it go. See, so it's just backwards of what you did yesterday. So let's try this out. Let's do, oh, horizontally, there's only one equation that ever applies for, for free fall, which is just x equals vt. Because remember, there's, there's no acceleration horizontally. Gravity doesn't pull right or left. It's just gonna close, just keep going the same speed all the way across. So it's always going 80 meters per second across the page. And it does that for 1.73 seconds. 1.73 seconds. That's why I had you guys solve for the time first, because just very straight in order. What is 80 times, well, that was the square root of three, right? That's where I want to be really exact about it. Uh, I'm looking at 139 meters. 139 meters. Now, I'm curious to know how close that is to uh, the answer choices, because again, I plugged in 9.8 for, uh, for, for gravity, meters per second squared. Let's see. Um, I see a drop time of 1.75 seconds, which is extremely close to my 1.73. Uh, and then I see 140 meters for the horizontal displacement, which pretty well matches the 139. Okay. So if you tweak gravity by a tiny, tiny bit, you know, about 2%, then you know, the answers will change by a tiny, tiny bit. Okay. Uh, so far. All right, now, there's still a couple more questions. Um, Actually, I want, to read, I want to read the very last question, the very last one, because this is the one I actually care about. It says, what is the total speed that the cannonball hits the ground? Okay. Um, but to answer that, you have to answer the, the third question first. Okay. It says, what's the vertical component of the velocity as it's about to hit the ground? So really, the third question is just a setup to answer the last question. What is the total speed? Okay. Let me go uh, mark on this paper exactly what I'm talking about. So as this cannonball is crashing, imagine you were down here, like, hey. Toss me that ball. Oh, zoom out here. You're down here. Hey, shoot me that cannonball. Okay. And then you're, you're going to catch it. I'm going to catch it. I wonder how fast it's going right as you're about to catch that cannonball. Let's go. Some lab. I can table that for one day. But wouldn't that cannonball be coming in kind of on an angle like that? Now, notice the angle I drew that at. See how it's like flush with the curve, like at this point where this guy's about to catch that cannonball? It's like flush with the curve. You guys see that? Right? I, I didn't draw it like this. I, I right? And this is, represents the crash velocity. I'll call it the crash. Right? Um, and hey, remember this class? Even before I taught you guys any kinematic motion, I taught you guys all this trigonometry stuff, like sine, cosine. Because this V crash has components. It's going, uh, the, this cannonball is kind of going to the right at the same time that it's falling 
sort of straight down. It still goes to the same time, isn't it? And the amount that's going across, I can call V sub X. And how fast it's going down, I can call final velocity in the Y direction. Okay, guess that. Okay. Now, depending on what you're given, um, sometimes you know this hypotenuse. You guys do see a right triangle here, right? Right triangle. Sometimes you know the hypotenuse, you guys get the legs. Okay. But in this case, we're doing the other way around. Um, you're going to figure out what the hypotenuse is based on knowing the legs. Actually, we already know one of the legs of this right triangle. Which number do you already know? Do you know Vx or Vfy? Vx. Yes. Vx. Yes. What is Vx? 80 meters per second. It's 80 meters per second. Because it was always the 80 meters per second. It was doing that constantly, all the way across. Yeah. You guys know this one. All right. So, so what is Vfy? Well, wouldn't that just be v not y plus gt? And v not y was zero, so it doesn't just boil down to gt? Right. Good. So uh, let's go 10 meters per second squared. And remember it was falling for 1.73 seconds, second like square root of three seconds. So wouldn't that just give you 17.3 meters per second? Is that, let me circle this in pink and circle this in pink. Okay. Okay. Here's how fast the cannonball is going across. Here's how fast it's coming straight down. Do you guys think that you could use, uh, what, uh, what math theorem, what math theorem are you guys going to use the solve for B crash at this point? Pythagorean theorem, right? You know, the two legs, you solve that. So let's get the total crash speed. So B crash, we're solving for, that's a new question. That's squared is equal to, well, Vx squared plus Vy squared. V final in the y direction should say squared. Because in, in the y direction, it's, it's always speeding up. Uh, so B crash. Where it is equal to, uh, well, I know Vx was always 80 meters per second because we know how fast that can is firing. Okay. And Vfy, okay. well, velocity in the y direction, remember it started at zero, just not moving up or down, but then as it fell, it fell faster, 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 and it picked up to 17 about meters per second, 17.3 meters per second. Okay. Oh, so to solve for V crash, I need one algebra step, and that's to do what to both sides? Square root. Square root. Yeah, that's how you undo a square. You take the square root. So square root of that. Square root of that. Plug it in, plug it in. Square root of 80 squared plus 17.3 squared. That is, B crash is 81.8 meters per second. That's it. Okay. Okay. You guys okay? Right. Um, now, this, uh, this total crash velocity, notice that it's actually just a little bit bigger than the horizontal velocity, isn't it? 80 compared to, well, about 82. Huh. But, but that actually does make sense. Here's why. Uh, my triangle here is uh, not really to scale. Um, there's a lot of horizontal motion and not very much vertical. 50 meters compared to, what was X again? I know we solved it. It was it's about 100 and, what would I get for that? 139, that sounds right. This came out to be 139 meters, okay? So um, the, the, this triangle is actually, if I drew it to scale, it would be a lot, uh, a lot skinnier. Right? So, uh, yeah, you, 80 meters per second across, 17 meters per second down. Uh, Pythagorean theorem, this hypotenuse is actually really close to the longest leg, which actually would be 80, 80 meters per second. Right? Yeah, so this comes out to uh, 81.8 meters per second. Uh, now, let me compare um, the answer choices on this paper. So there should be one that's extremely close to 81.8 meters per second. And, oh, 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 oh one, one it says that exactly. It says 81.8 meters per second. Right, so uh, even if you use the rounded version of gravity or not, either way, you're going to get the same number for that one. Right. Right, questions so far? Right, let's go on to the next scenario. Uh, oh, I like this one. I like this next one. So this is a couple questions, 9, 10, although probably that you have to solve for some extra stuff too along the way. 
A cannon fires a cannonball horizontally uh, off the edge of a cliff. Oh, okay, so it's the same scenarios we just did, and also that you guys did in your lab yesterday, and also you've seen before, so pretty common scenario, things come up. Right. On an alien planet, ooh, we're about to take a field trip, going into space. Just lay on some Star Wars planet somewhere. The cannonball lands at some horizontal displacement from the base of the cliff, so that's your X in meters. Uh, can you, oh, and you know these other things, you, you know the height of the cliff, uh, you know the blast speed of the cannon, uh, it looks like I've got the same height cliff and same loss speed of the cannon as, as I just used in the last example. Okay. Uh, so can you figure out what is the uh, what is the gravity field on the planet? What is the acceleration due to gravity? Okay. Uh, and furthermore, can you figure out the total speed that it's crash landing on the surface of that planet by the time it gets down to the valley? Okay. So, uh, of course, Chris will solve this for you guys as a, as a quiz review, but um. Remind you guys, too, why I set up this particular paper the way I did with, with these boxes. Uh, this is just one framework of thinking about it. Maybe it could help you. I just want to remind you guys how these boxes work. So there's horizontal information and there's vertical information involved in projectiles. And whenever you apply these physics equations, you're either only doing horizontal or you're only doing vertical. Right? And then you can put it all back together later with Pythagorean theorem to get some like total value, like total speed, which is going to, that's how this one's going to end right? with Pythagorean total speed. Okay. And um, if you break it down that way, use that framework, then you know that, well, uh, horizontally, there are only three variables you could ever be dealing with, T, X, and V, because there's no acceleration horizontally. But gravity does pull vertically, so in the vertical direction, that opens up acceleration, which means that velocity is changing, that's why you got more variables. You guys remember that if you know any three things vertically, you can solve it, uh, or, uh, at least five boxes. Um, so to start with, there's not enough information. Okay. or with horizontal, if you know two things, it becomes solvable because there's only one equation, just x equals vt. That's the only thing that ties this together. Okay. And then uh, to seal this whole thing off, uh, however much time it takes to go across is the same time it takes to fall down. That's to say, on, on say a picture like this, however much time it takes to get from here to here is the same whether or not you analyze it horizontally or vertically. It's, right, same time either way. Yeah. And so you're allowed to transfer that variable because that's a scalar value. See, all these others are vectors, so they're specific to the direction, but time is a scalar, so you can uh, transfer that. And so if you like that framework, if that helps, then that's a good review. And then give guys, a, I think, one projectile problem on your quiz that is, uh, looks like these. It, it, uh, if you can solve these projectile problems, then you can definitely solve uh, all the linear motion problems because you have to know linear motion to do all the projectile motion. One more reason this is a good quiz review. Right, so cannon, cliff, height. Uh, this is for number nine and ten. Uh, I'm gonna have this height be the uh, yeah, oh the same height as I did before, 50 meters. And uh, let's say this time I know how far out the, the cannonball goes. So get a blast velocity going, plus V sub X, because it's same straight horizontal. Just, and it's right there. Uh, let's say we know where it lands, and it lands at, I'll say, um, I'll change this to D. Let's say D equals uh, 111 meters out. So I'm just pulling the number straight off the pages in front of me. Uh, now, if he were on Earth, that would be enough information to figure out what that last speed was. In fact, that's uh, what you guys did on your lab yesterday, isn't it? You know, you knew the height drop, you knew where it landed, you could figure out what the last speed was. But you guys knew what gravity was. Now, what we're about to do here is we're going to put a twist on that. Is I'm going to tell you what the blast speed is. Let's call it 80 meters per second, just like the last scan I had. Uh, but that means that there's only one specific uh, gravity that would allow that to happen. And we're going to solve for that gravity. So we're on some alien planet. You guys remember that? That's part of the premise? Okay. Some alien planet. Hmm. I wonder if gravity is really strong or really weak here compared to Earth. Huh. Is it more than or less than 10 meters per second squared to make all these numbers click into place? Oh, we're about to find out. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think we should start with? Should we start with horizontal information or vertical information? What do you guys think? And, and there's a right answer to this question. Okay. 
Uh, well, to make a tax CV checklist, save a little time, just refer to the page. Okay. Uh, notice that vertically, we only know two things. We only know how far it fell and that the initial velocity vertically was zero, but we don't actually know gravity, so there's not enough information to work with. But horizontally, we know how fast it's going across and also how far it went. So couldn't we very quickly get how much time it took to go from here to here? And then we'll be set, then we'll be off and rolling and solving all kinds of things. So let's start with that. Let's go um, distance is equal to speed times time. Right? X equals VT. Oh, do D and V sub X, but same idea, right? Uh, because we know two of those three things. We can solve for time. I know it went 111 meters uh, at a rate of 80 meters per second. I can figure out how much time that took. You guys see, I'm just going to divide both sides by 80 meters per second. That's the algebra step. That works out to 1.39 seconds. Okay. Now, that's a little bit rounded. My calculator says 1.3875, but I'll call it that. Okay, so that's how much time. Okay. Now, notice I didn't actually ask you to solve for time, but you do need to do that for a middle step. Uh, the, the question is, what's the gravity pull of the planet? So now let's go look vertically. Well, I know it fell 15 meters in 1.39 seconds. Ah, ah, we can figure this out. Because we can go do this. H equals 1 half GT squared. Okay. Well, B not YT plus that, but B not Y is just zero. Because aim straight horizontal. It wasn't moving up or down initially. Okay. So we're just looking vertical. Remember, all this was horizontal. And now we're going to switch over and look vertical. Okay. Uh, we're trying to solve for the gravity of the planet. We don't know that. But we do know the height drop was 15 meters. That was given. And the time was 1.39 seconds, which wasn't quite given to us, but there was enough information lying around that we could solve for that. And we did it just a moment ago. Uh, so, uh, well, you guys see what I'm going to do, right? Good. Multiply both sides by two. So times two, times two. To get rid of this two. And then divide both sides by 1.39 seconds, eight squared. 1.39 seconds, eight squared. So in pink, I just wrote some algebra steps. What is 15 meters divided by 1.39 seconds being squared? That is, I'm getting a, oh, wait, then I had to multiply by two. I almost forgot that, times two. I'm getting a free fall gravity of 15.5 meters per second squared, meters per second squared. Uh, yep, that's that's an answer choice. So that looks good. All right, so I asked you guys a question a moment ago. I said, I wonder if, by the time we solve for that, if the gravity on this alien planet would be uh, stronger than or weaker than on Earth. Like, if you're standing here firing this cannon, would you feel really light or really heavy? And looking at that number, you guys would say very what? Heavy. Would you be about 50% heavier than you would be on Earth? Because on Earth, this number is about 10 meters per second squared. On this alien planet, it's up to, ooh, over 15. Right? So if you weigh 100 pounds on Earth, you weigh like 155 pounds on this planet. So, right. uh, there's another question, follow-up question for, for the same scenario. Right. So we figured out the gravity on this planet. Right. Now we got to figure out what is the total speed that the cannonball is hitting the ground? What's, what's the crash speed? Oh, right. uh, hey, yeah, we just solved uh, something really similar to this before. So see if you can say a step ahead of me. Uh, if you can figure this out before I do, then you should have confidence that you know how to do this. So this cannonball is going to be landing over here. No, notice how I'm holding my ro roller flush to the curve. We fall it the whole way. See how it's flush, 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 flush to the curb. And then right at the end here, again, have a guy down here. Hey, pass me that cannonball. Like, okay. Then that cannonball is going to be going right about that angle. Okay. And if that represents a velocity vector, then its magnitude would represent the speed. We'll call it the crash. Okay. And you know, furthermore, we could actually get the crash angle. So I'll do that with you guys too. But one thing at a time. Now, remember what we did before. We said, well, it's crashing on some weird angle. But really, that's two components put together. 
that's its horizontal motion going across and its vertical motion coming down. And we can eventually combine everything with the Pythagorean theorem. So let me go ahead and draw those components in there. Here's B sub X. Here's B final Y. So I'll call this B sub X. Here's B final in the Y direction. I'll get so far. And which number do you already know? B sub X. This is just the same all the way across. Doesn't change what it's doing. It's not speeding up or slowing down horizontally. There's no gravity horizontally. Gravity only pulls vertically. Speaking of which, I wonder what speed it got up to. Well, that would just be g times t. Uh, or, or you could do that fancy, uh, I won't do this, but you could apply a start equation, could you? Be like square root of 2gh, or plug in that height. But let's do the easier version, which is just the second equation, which is, uh, well, just boils down to this. Now, that gravity, remember, we, we just got that. Remember it was 15.5 meters per second squared? We just did all, all that work to get that. So plug in uh, 15.5 meters per second squared. And the time that we fell for, well, we solved for that too. So we solved both of these things. This was 1.39 seconds. 1.39 seconds. Ah, so just tag those together, that times that. What is 15.5 times 1.39? I'm looking at 21.5 meters per second. Okay. Now, keep in mind, that's strictly vertically. That's if you're only looking at the vertical component, how fast is it coming strictly down? Okay. But that's not quite the answer to the question. The answer to the question is, what's the total crash speed on this angle? But you guys see how this is going to end. Right? Again, see if you can stay a step ahead of me, because I bet you guys see how to finish this. If it's going this fast across, and it's coming this fast down, can you guys do Pythagorean theorem and finish this off? So V crash, well, let's go to the last step since uh, you guys have done plenty of these. It's a square root of each side squared added together. 80 meters per second being squared plus 21.5 meters per second being squared. Square root of this whole, get your two pieces added together. What's the square root of? 80 squared plus 21.5 squared. Right. I'm looking at V crash as being 82.8 meters per second. Right. Notice just like last question that uh, the total crash speed actually is not very much bigger than the horizontal velocity because it, it was blasted so fast horizontally um, and it fell not, not a huge distance that it didn't pick up a whole lot of additional speed. But it is faster. Okay. Uh, and uh, to fulfill a promise, I did tell you guys, I remind you guys how to get this crash angle. Right? What angle is this guy touching that cannonball? Uh, do you guys remember how to get that angle theta? I bet some of you guys do. Uh, here, do you remember a sine cosine tangent? Like that? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pick one of those. I'm going to pick tangent. You guys remember that tangent? of some angle is defined as opposite leg over adjacent leg on a right triangle. And hey, we have a right triangle here. And we know all three sides, so tangent is going to play off the two legs, right? opposite over adjacent compared to that angle. Um, so uh, if you want to solve for theta in general, remember it's inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. Uh, here's a general rule. Uh, if you, you can take a trick. Uh, trig function of an angle, it will always spit you out some ratio. Sine, cosine, or tangent. There's different kinds of ratios. Right? Or you can do an inverse trig of a ratio, and it will always spit you out an angle. And that's what we're going to do here. So that crash angle is the inverse tan, uh, let's see, 80 meters per second, divided by 21.5 meters per second. Right. should tell you guys, too, that um, my triangle is not to scale, so this angle is not going to look what it looks like on my picture. But right. inverse tan, 80 on 21.5. Right. I'm looking at 75 degrees from the vertical. Uh, or could you guys also figure out what this angle down here is? I'll call it beta. Wouldn't it just be 90 degrees minus that? 90 minus that. 15 degrees from the horizontal. 
might be a better context for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what questions do you guys have so far? Any questions? All right, so last thing with you guys, um, that should cover a, a lot of what you're going to see on the quiz. You guys also got a quiz question that has to do with graphs. So real fast, let's recap graphs. What if there is a uh, rock dropped off a cliff? Let's make those three graphs real fast. So we're doing displacement versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time. Okay. We've done a bunch of these. Okay. Now, your guys' take on quiz question is a little bit different than this uh, scenario, but you're going to have to draw these three graphs. And I bet you guys can figure out how to do that uh, once you look back at your notes. So get one more of these in for the weekend. Uh, I usually start with this middle graph. Right? Uh, you guys remember what the middle graph looks like? So at time zero, if, 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 it's, if it's dropped, where it drops, it means it starts from rest. It has zero velocity at time zero. And then remember, it'll pick up at a constant rate. And that rate is um, gravity. So actually, the sign has an equation. It's also that second kinematic equation. Yeah, uh, v final equals v initial plus gt. And if v initial is zero, it's just gt. G, slope times. And then acceleration versus time. Right? Well, that just is gravity. You guys remember the slope of v versus t tells you the coordinate of a versus t. And finally, uh, what about x versus t? Because this is your first time. What shape does this look like regularly in this class? Parabola. Anything is accelerating in free fall. So if I put it, um, say, define the top of the hill as 0, 0 point 0.0. Yeah, this is going to make a nice uh, parabola. parabola. So that as time takes along, it falls further and further. If you define down as positive, then all this would be positive values for all this graphs. Okay. Now you guys ready to knock this quiz out? You guys have a good rest of your Thursday. See you guys on Friday.